Hi folks, and welcome back to what is hopefully going to be the end of Three Cards to Midnight. Once again, our story thus far. The Tarot Reader tries to keep Jess focused. It seems that time is of the essence. Jess's memories take her to the Puritan Refinery, where she is stalked by a hired killer named Zavaris. Jess narrowly escapes right into the waiting arms of Merriman. The P.I. admits that he did, in fact, work for Adrian Crawford, but began to suspect that he had been hired to find Jess just, just so she could be killed, and he couldn't go through with it. Since then, Merriman has been feeding false information to Crawford, claiming to still be looking for her, but without luck. Is Merriman telling the truth now? Is Crawford the one behind everything? Where does Devin Tellis fit into the picture? Jess returns to the asylum where she finally learns the truth about her birth father and what really happened 30 years before. Jess's twin was a sickly and deformed boy who Devin had not wanted to keep alive. Ely had survived and gone away with Celeste and Crawford. It was Jess who Devin confessed to murdering. He had put her in the care of the Silloways and allowed himself to be locked up for most of his life in an effort to protect Jess. Back with the Tarot Reader, Jess realizes that he is, in fact, Devin Tellis. Devin tells Jess that he tried to stop Crawford, but failed. He thinks Jess tried to do the same, and failed as well. But because of her special abilities, she's getting a second chance. Jess suddenly wonders where they are. Which is a very legitimate concern at this point. If she tried and failed, where is she? You have the same gift your mother had, and all her ancestors before her. What kind of gift? It's not easy to explain. Let's just say you're not bound by time like I am. You can travel in that dimension. That's how you were able to go and see Ben and Lila. What do you mean? Like I went back in time? To when they were still at the motel? That's the easiest way to look at it. I think somehow the dream you had on the boat unlocked your gift, but you didn't realize it. And you certainly didn't know how to control it. You still don't. So how did I get here? That's the last piece of this puzzle. You must have gone to confront Crawford, but he was too strong for you. Then, suddenly, we were here. I think either you, subconsciously, or maybe someone else was able to create this, I don't know, pocket in time. So I'll need to go back? I'm afraid so, and soon. You're on the very edge between life and death. We have only a short time to find out what happened with Crawford and prepare you for your return. So it's time to gear up for the final battle. And once again, just like last time, we don't get to see the names of the cards before we look at them. Or before we pick at one. Before we pick a card and turn it over to reveal. But anyway, we'll start with this one. The Eight of Wands. I'm back at Merriman's office. It feels like we're running out of time. Back and time get to be our key words for this one. And they both contain quite a few uh, key words we'll have to find. Anyway, we can go out back, we can, uh, look, we can double back, there are half backs, and speaking of that, we've got a rest here for a back rest, let's see, oh, we can roll back things, we can brush back people if we're playing baseball, wing back, and let's see, a uh, diamond back like a snake. And then we have the back rest, so back nine for golf. A back stop. A back. A uh, pack of cigarettes, backpack. And let's see, what else do we have around here? And a back table. None of that feather, but we 
you have a back log. Yeah, back log works. Ooh, a back hand. This looks like a hoe, a back hoe. What else is there? You know, a backyard. We've just escaped from the refinery. Now Crawford will know about Merriman and me. Whatever we do, we'll have to do it fast. We're going to use a little backdoor strategy. Crawford knows you're with me, but I've convinced him that I'm holding you hostage and that I'll hand you over for the right amount of cash. That should get him out of his ivory tower. I'll try to stall him as long as I can, but in the meantime, you go to Vegas and see if you can find your brother. And what happens when Crawford finds out what we're doing? If we're right about your twin, that he's the source of Crawford's power, then if you can get to him, then we'll have to hope it'll pull the plug on Crawford. Hmm. So, Merriman has helped us out in a big way, and if we can manage to get to the Minaret while Adrian is gone, then maybe we can find out what happened to the brother. Anyway, since time is of the essence, we've got double time, half time, time out, and time log taken care of, so what about some overtime, and peace time, and a timetable, a time log, ooh, a time sheet, and let's see, what else do we have? Time. What am I missing? Uh, time peace. Peace of puzzle. I still don't know what's happened to my parents until now. Who's this? We don't have much time. Just talk. Hello? Jeff? Oh, thank God you're okay! Mom, where are you? We're safe, honey. Merriman said he'd arrange for us to meet. I was afraid you and Dad were dead. It was Devin who saved us. He set up the murder scene and then stayed behind so we could escape. He wanted us to tell you that everything he did, he did for you. I have to go. Mom, we'll call you when it's all over. So, Devin broke out and protected So now we know where you went. Whatever happened must have taken place in the minaret, Crawford's Tower. But I don't think I went straight there. I think I went somewhere else first. Let's see if we can find out where. Choose the next card. Judgment? This is a good card. It can mean making a hard choice, but also hope, transformation, awakening, knowing what you must do. I went back to see Sydney at the Haven. Come on, thank you. So, hmm, the Eight of Wands is a call to action. There is energy in the air and events are in motion. In addition, this card signifies endings. Some things are coming to a close. Now is the time to declare yourself. All elements are in place, so don't hesitate. I should have done this for chapter 6, shouldn't I? Oh well. But anyway, you know whenever we flip over the next card, we're gonna get judgment. So we say goodbye to the Eight of Wands. And say hello to the judgment card. Just two words this time. Book and blood. Blood? That's not a good word to have at this stage. Gearing up for a final confrontation. Yeah, let's see. What do we have around here? Well, there can be blood moons. Uh, blood sausage. Blood oranges. And blood worms. Let's see. Ooh, ox blood. That's one. Ooh, a blood diamond. That works. Ooh, here's a bunch of ties. Blood ties. And that looks like a bottle of alcohol, so blood alcohol. 
I had to see Sydney one last time before I went to Vegas. Something told me I was going to need his help. You have to understand, Jess, your bloodline is a matriarchal order. Only women have the gift. The fact that you had a male twin was almost unheard of. In fact, it only happened once before, a long time ago, and it almost destroyed the order. That's why Devon tried to kill his own son? Illy, your brother, wasn't meant to live. He was an anomaly. And he wouldn't have survived without modern technology. But Celeste couldn't bear to let him die. But if only women can have the power... A male twin can have the gift, but it's a mutated version of it. To use the old word, it's an abomination. So is Crawford one of these male twins with the mutant powers? He knew about the gift because he was married to a member of our order, and he was envious. He was the only one who supported Celeste in her decision to keep the male child alive. And then he protected Celeste and my twins so he could control their power. That's the only reason. And now that your brother has come of age, Crawford is even stronger. Maybe too strong to overcome. But you're the last of your line. You're the only one who could possibly stand against him. Hmm. So that would be what prompted her to go into this whole final showdown. Yeah. Well, let's see what we un what the let's see what else we uncover when we find all the words here. Well, let's see. Well, there's song. Song books. Ooh, log books. A baby book. Those are pretty. A uh, book rack. Yeah. Ooh, address. An address book. A uh, bookcase. A book bag. Once you master your gift, you can simply will yourself to travel, but that comes only with experience. There's no book that will teach you what you need to know. So, is there anything I can do? Just tell me and I'll do it. Using the gift requires power, energy. The most essential source is within yourself. Your power is the strongest. But we also draw power from other people, places, sometimes even objects. Again, with experience, it will happen naturally. But at this stage, you need to consciously tap into other sources of power. How do I do it? Visualizing will help. Having something tangible to focus on, like these tarot cards. If you associate something meaningful, an important person, place, or object with a particular tarot card, you can then draw its energy through the card. You have the amulet? This amulet is a means to help you focus your powers. Look at these tarot cards and decide which three will give you the most power. Then what? That's up to you. I can't and won't tell you that you have to go to the tower and confront Crawford. But his power will only get stronger. It's your decision to make. So Sydney goaded her do, into do you going after. Which cards you chose? No, but obviously I didn't choose the right ones. Well, we're down to our last card. I think we'll finally learn what happened to you at the tower. <sighs> and judgment is now complete. But. Judgment is a reminder that a decision must be made. Consider the matter carefully, and then commit without reservation. If it's you who's being judged, never lose sight of your worth. The past and its mistakes are behind you. You may even have a new calling, a conviction of what must be done, and find a path to salvation. <laughs> 